What's up guys? This is the Brave Man and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Ottoman Empire. And this will be an hour special because it completely slipped my mind yesterday, or yesterday, uh, the last session, that I hadn't actually recorded one. So without further ado, let's attack the... one on attack. We are being attacked by the garrison at Ardabel, but I think I'm probably going to go on the offensive. Mainly because their infantry corps is exceptionally weak and... We've got lots of guys with swords who are going to chop them to bits. So let's do this. <clears throat> I do plan on spending some time um, in this episode just cranking out some turns and kick-starting my growth. Because if I am going to try and take on the world, including a fully specced um, Indian power, then I need that economy um, to help support... Well, to help support my advancement in the world. Okay, so... <clears throat> Just one sec, guys. I cleared my throat a second ago, but I need to do it again. No doubt you can all revel in how absolutely professional I am. Okay, let's drop my mortars behind. Let's draw up my infantry centre which maybe not all of it because we know how mortars can get when it comes to their uh, their impacts against cluster troops so I might deploy my philine up front because they are the my least least valuable infantry unit I want to keep my semis back in case the camels try anything particularly tricky. Maybe deploy something like that. Let's get my mounted troops over on the flank. Let's get my... Okay, so who... So Feline, higher defence. More, much higher defence. Lesser morale. Okay, so let's put our Feline... Um, into the mix in the middle of the line. They'll advance forward. The Bashi Bazooks and my Riskers of Souls can push up the flank with my mounted troops. General in the centre. God, they've deployed back. I suspect battle will end up being a combined effort the centre, because I suspect they're... They've deployed lots of men high up on the ridge. Not quite what I was planning. So let's move my Israeli units in to cover the flank. My Semenes can hunker back here in the event that they come up and around. push forward bring my cavalry and so on forward as well okay the first water battery shots are engaging engaging my poor Felain can't, can't transverse this slope So maybe that might be my Israeli's objective with the Felain to threaten up this ridge while my Felain continue well, what might end up happening is actually let's take let's get my my melee brigade they need to go over here and I don't I think they can sort of work their way up here. They could storm up with their with their hand weapons. So let's run the Israelis up into position. Not the Israelis, my Feline into position. Let's move my mounted troops can continue advancing on the flank. 
cavalry is not really providing any great results. These guys might have to run uphill, so they're going to be very tired. Let's change target for the howitzers, because they're clearly not really doing that much useful stuff for us. Probably going to end up running my melee troops as well, because they can't really afford to spend too much time doing nothing. Artillery have changed targets. These men are pushing up. Which is good. I might keep a Bashi Bazook unit back because they do have one unit of camels here. I want to be I want to be considerate of. So our first men have engaged. Engaging just a unit of Farlock Arm Populous. Yep, here come the Camel Nomads. So no Bashies to go charge. Charge these Camel Nomads. Specifically, reorientate this Felaine unit so they don't cause too many problems. Miss are, yeah, they are tired. Artillery, pound this position right here. Mamelukes. And my camels continue to advance around to the rear. Uh, too bad these Feline aren't going to be very happy with their predicament. But our Riskers of Souls are going to cut off their the camels' resupply, or their chances for support down the rear. These nomads have been broken. So even though they're fighting uphill, these Riskers of Souls are damn efficient killers. So they are falling back, so let's... Melee troops, two of them anyway, continue to charge up the slope. These guys are just armed populace. They all fall very quickly in the face of these men. No, you guys get back. Change the artillery target to these units in the center. So Miss Aurelis have... Okay, let's advance. Let's advance these units up to fire on towards the garrison. We're fairly in, probably going to carve through these musketeers pretty well. Let's push this unit of in up. To be honest, let's push my other musketeer unit up. Charge the camels into this unit of camel nomads. No, they're routing. reconstituted we've broken through the unit on the left let's get my fellow to chase down there the unit that's charging down the hill let's position my Israelis up to shoot at the guns charge my other fellow unit on Should be okay because they're fighting my camel nomads. So absolutely do damage with them. Do damage to them. Let's get my camel nomads out and try to hit some of these guys that are charging around in reserve. Change the target of our artillery. Let's 
these men are more or less just in a position to uh, shoot at whoever tries to flee. So I've halted the attack so my, my own melee infantry don't get shot in the back. These armed populace, while they may hold the high ground, my men are significantly more effective fighters. Let's keep my camels up here. Not my camels, my cavalry up here to respond to wherever these guys may decide to to run. The camels can continue the, the traditional attack. Okay, now let's move my serrays up. So they're not shooting into the backs of this combat up here. Or down here, I should say. So there go my Feline, charging into another unit of armed populace. Yeah, continue to charge the garrison of musket men. Who's that? Armed populace. Okay, let's focus on them. Just make everyone stop doing what they're doing, because in People are going to uh, fall thick and fast. I particularly want to get one unit to charge down this hill into the backs of these guys. This fellow unit's more than enough to deal with them. Slaughter them as they choose to route through our position. Too bad some of them are going to escape, but that's why I've got my general. Good, now he can go and engage. Get ready to go and engage them. Firelock like on populace is being just executed by firing squad. That is all of them. Good, that is all of them. Okay, camels have stopped doing anything. Let's have you guys. They're probably going to route, but you may as well try. The general's going to take out those chaps and then run on into the firelock on populace. Let's turn off the artillery. Yep, they did rout. So that's everyone against this unit of armed populace. Although well, they can thank the lucky stars, they're being chased by a tired cavalry unit and <laughs> a tired camel unit, which is already slow. Very slow. Yeah, they're going to make it because they've spread out. So this guy's going to touch the side. Yep, damn it. Oh well. I'll take that as a uh, as a good win. With a nice exchange ratio as well. It will be a sad thing when we lose, we start to replace our Sarelis. Because our men remain strong. However, new model, new ways of operating are coming into the fore. Yeah, the Georgian rebels have come back. Let's just... God, I was scared of that sound from an elf. How have we lost that? Okay, so we've got wedge formation. And we've got a bit of cash. And Georgia is now happy with us. Sort of. Okay, I could spend, that, spend the money on repairing the capital of... To cap the capital city at Tbilisi, or I could spend the money trying to earn more money. I could also build it on, spend it on upgrading my uni my universities, which might not be a bad idea. I haven't got my policies ramped down. Good, so we should be growing pretty rapidly. I can go for the spend money to make money plan. 
So let's get a cotton plantation down here at Cairo. Can't build new roads. We can build. Okay. I don't think I go for a Sultan's Observatory yet. They've got lots more lower level things to invest in. Like a prosperous Madrasa. I think I'd probably upgrade this port because it's already connected to the trade network. 300 is probably not enough to do anything anywhere except maybe do a bit of replenishment. Let's take the city. Let's def let's uh <laughs> destroy this problem once and for all. Then I, then this army can turn. Ooh, that's a good question. Where will they go? Maybe north into Russia. Okay. Let's deploy my artillery. Let's deploy melee infantry up front. Storm into the town. One flank can be guarded by combined formations of Israeli and Feline musketeers to provide some square support. Because this flank doesn't really have as much support, they're going to get a unit of Bashi Bazooks to back them up. Split my mobile elements on each flank, general in the centre, deploy these Semenes to do something. Ridge lion can't actually assault up it. That'll teach me for not looking at my geography. In which case, then they can probably do something more like this. Like the fields, like the like Pelennor fields. Take them head on! You just go straight in. Bring these Bashi Bazooks straight in, redeploy the, in, the uh, infantry to uh, continue their push. Most likely. Yeah, they're already routing. Yeah, got a camel charge on from this flank, which I missed. Keep pushing the infantry on. So the camels did charge my Feline. Feline. But they're going to get the Bashi Bazooks tearing the, their backsides off. Awesome. So, yeah, they're scattered. To be honest, this is probably going to be over fairly quickly. Come on, lads. Cavalry sit idly by. Camino hasn't broken, but they're soon going to be under fire. So let's do something like this.
Take him out. Go get him, Bashies. Charges Musketeer Union in the flank. Let's pull these guys back. Come on, this auto should be able to fire some muskets into the cattle. Yep. Routing, supposedly. But I'll leave my men chasing them down. Just to make sure. Let's push my melee infantry into the town. Most of my army's not really got much to do. Let's bring the Feline over. These guys aren't deployed very efficiently when it comes to maximising gunfire, but I'm not so bothered. Falling down at least. Yeah, the enemy camel nomads did come back. Let's turn fire well off here. Although, no, that was the enemy camel nomads, I believe. Yeah, let's speed up time because they're gonna. It's only this last unit of desert warriors left. Yep, they did not last very long. Hey, Firelock on Populous came back. But they too did not last very long. Let's end the battle there. That was a pretty conclusive little chopping job. Awesome. So now... France has taken Afghanistan. Well, that's a turn up for the books. So... Wow. So the only enemy army we have to our east is the British. Because France has, t has t either taken or traded Afghanistan for somewhere. I bet it was Brussels. They traded it for Brussels. But because Brussels isn't Persia's home theatre, it's actually India. Um... Wait, no, hold on. So if that was if that was Persia Persian They should still be alive then. Because we've taken a city in Europe. Best for these are European factions. Well on the battle map they are. How odd. But they are a lovely buffer against the Mughal Empire, so we only have to worry really about the ports. Which is rather nice. Let's try to see if we can get a peace with the British. They want Syria? No. I'm not giving up my territory so easily, sir. Moreover, we will grow. Actually, I might knock down the, um, Esfahan's trade port and replace it with a shipyard. Because any trade that we have can come through... Um, Baghdad like if, we, if there are any tradable res, any tradable resources in Persia they can be exported through Baghdad and then it gives us a trade it gives us a uh, military base of operations for the Indian Ocean potentially also getting ships out to trade theatres here we have a Hashashin 
this and okay where do we want our session because we've got one up here in moscow who isn't really doing a lot so you might actually go down here to don voisco to keep an eye on what's just over the hills you don't really have to be there either really i want them scouting out threats that's what i want but i suppose having one agent in this area is probably a good idea okay five thousand seven hundred this turn so do you get any of the ports no this fan is earning us a good amount of money but not much growth but i think it will be best in the long run to turn this into a shipyard because then we've got Basra to provide if any trade goods do get exported, which I don't think there is in Persia. Nothing nothing like on the on the trade map, at least. And I may end up building a fort down here. Hmm. Anyway, spending money to make money. It's quite a fun part of this game, really. <laughs> I find. So you've upgraded a lot of anchor and industry. I might even drop university upgrade in. It does limit what we can actually upgrade now. But there are farms and cheaper alternatives. Do you have any other towns you do? Mashabad. Oh, Mashabad. Well, there's Com. Mashabad is up there. Good. Okay, so I'm not going to stop this from being a coffee house. Because you do have a university. So let's agree the farm. I'm going to upgrade you to, to a Sultan's Observatory when we have the cash. Upgrade the Ordnance Factory in Baghdad, maybe? It's probably a good thing to buy as any. No, let's rebuild the Bay's Mansion and spend whatever money we have left over on rebuilding this army. Because they need to go march and take Georgia. Good. We're starting to earn a good amount of money on trade. Our tax base is... It's growing. Not a massive amount yet, but it will start to snowball. And we need, we need... We have some time before we have to worry about massive growth. Because I need to get my naval technologies up in order to build a good seagoing navy. Because that will help dramatically when protecting myself from threats from the west. There is a possibility from Baghdad to springboard sending an army to the Americas. Which is part of the reason why I want to put a shipyard there so I can kind of escort it with some decent level ships. Because we, while we're not at war with the Mughal Empire, um, the Brits could have a force down here somewhere. Or like a good... Actually, no, there's no port. Well, still a good idea to put a shipyard. Let's keep our agent going. He's not... I'm not after, to try, I'm not after assassinating anyone. I just want to see what's there. Although, actually, it's probably a good idea for him to infiltrate. Probably the same for you. Okay, so let's spend some money. Lots of money I think we can be spent in Damascus. We've got roads. Fishing ports, quite a good cheap one to get. And also bother on madrasas. Iron workshops, I am, because they provide loads of money. Dresses are more for happiness. We're not so bothered about happiness yet. Oh, we almost sent that army marching around. Um, what roads do you have? Okay, let's build the next level of roads. And at some point we need to build... Actually, the mob might be cheaper than 
brigs and sloops. So you cost 173 upkeep. A light galley costs... Oh no, a light galley's still cheaper. Yeah, your days are numbered, matey boy. So I would like to really upgrade this port. Well, this university in order to get to increase the speed at which I can research naval te technologies because that's what I want to dedicate them to being. That's my naval research academy. Their job is to sprint down the naval technologies to catch up because right now we have we don't have a navy. Hey, they're offering to pay us for a trade agreement. Yes, good sir. Let us do that. Prussia have got land at the back of Russia. Austria, without having to worry about its southern flank, has pushed forward quite aggressively into Europe. It looks like New Spain may have been combined into the Spanish Empire. Don't worry, Malta. I see you. You will be on our list, but we have to have a good navy for that. Because we'll be fighting quite far away from our own support systems, so I will want a good navy before I start sparring too much in the Western Mediterranean. Okay, let's get this army fully replenished so I can march them up to go take Yerevan. Plantation, Sultan's Observatory. Newport in Greece. Good. So let's get this meager yield corn plantation up and running. Let's upgrade the port in Basra to be able to transport to export the goods. See lots of these are military buildings, but I don't really want to build military buildings yet. Or at least I want to expand my economic system to match the growth in my military. And there's no farms I can upgrade with this handful of cash left. I might even let them build their royal palace. That would be quite handy. Now let's repair the fur trader. You are actually, conver are you actually converting the population mm, slowly. Looks like the army in Baluchistan is growing. But I do only really want a garrison force defending Persia. And they need to be quite flexible to respond to wherever they might attack. And there go the Spanish. Fortunately, I am the Ottoman Empire, so my turn time, <laughs> the turn time of the usual problem faction, is as long as I want it to be. But yeah, I, I really want to grow my economy, A, because the Ottomans have a really good economy, when you actually finally upgrade it, and B, we've always had a limited economy due to the fact of needing to spend it on other... Oh, it's because I don't have a tra traditional university, is it? I've always had a slightly bottlenecked economy because of the size of the armies I needed to build. Like, yeah, we can't even build the next level dockyard. That's still replenishing. Okay, four grand. Let's upgrade the port in Alexandria. Even two grand is good enough to build a new a Sultan's Observatory in Esfahan. Good. New town emerged. Larissa in Greece. Remember that. Courland is doing a good job in harrying the British, meaning it's giving us a bit more breathing room.
it'd probably be hmm. I might end up having might end up need to have a small garrison based forward at my shipyard in Persia because one British spoiling attack could cause me some problems. Yeah, right now I'm in quite a happy little loop. Just growing my empire and really leveling it out. We've gone quite wide. I suppose in Sims, in Sim, uh, not Sims, civilization terms, we've gone wide but not tall. There's been some rebellions, but the Mughals may take it over. Portuguese are raiding the northern Italians, which is nice. Crimea, which is our friend, is still alive, which is nice. Good stuff. Hmm. So. <laughs> Fine, don't trade with us if you want. Yeah, this army's definitely growing. Granted, it's not a very good army, but we've got good visibility on what's going on. So upgrades in Greece, which is good because we need to give Larissa an objective. And that objective will be... Oh yeah, at some point we do need to hit the Iroquois. But they are allies with a bunch of people, so I'm going to leave them alone. They're at war with the French, bizarrely. I suppose the thing to keep an eye on is if they lose their territories here to jump on it when they hit Greece. But right now I don't really care about them. We can take this whenever we want, so it's not a crushing objective. Um, okay, so it's okay to have a madrasa and a priest here because we've only got these two territories and we're not really going to expand here soon. Before we do Bay's Mansion. And before we do roads, I do love road building. And university building. I do like that. I want to look for the cheaper upgrades we can get in these regions. So you are fully equipped. So you can now leave Azerbaijan in, in a pretty good state. You can march on towards Armenia, which will finish their building this turn. This force will go up to Georgia. We do need to rebuild the capital, really. We can tax them now, which is nice. Good. We also need to approach the thorny question of Dagestan. They are protectorate, or they are the... They are, um head honcho for a number of regions. They are a protector because of empire bugs. Um, so we may be at war with a bunch of people we don't necessarily want to be, but we're not going to worry about that yet. Um, got a lot of spending to do. Including ultimately roads. Road building is good. A, because it's like a top it's a top level technology, which not technology, it's a top level uh, infrastructure building. And the reason why I like that is because it means there's no more spending that needs to be done on it. It's it's done. It's completed. Completed it, mate. That's why I quite like jumping up those trees quickly. Like um, fishing fleets as well. They're good ones to build in. Because they're cheap, they build fairly quickly. Yeah. Tech advances, two of them. So we've got socket bayonet and we've got naval shore facilities. So you may as well go for cadenced marching because we need then need to make a point of upgrading something to the military academy. Kayseri is carrying on with its industry tech so they probably no you're doing um military techs 
probably like you to go for a spinning mule. No, actually, you keep going down this route to get down towards Quicklime. It's a good idea. Another new town in the Romelia. Let's build a smith's. I think got 3,000. Let's build the wine estates. Let's build. Can build the Bay's Mansion. I probably don't. Plus 8 per town wealth is really powerful, especially when we don't need the. We're not so bothered about the tech. We don't really need the happiness, because they're already really happy. But the plus eight turn to town wealth is really big. In fact, to be honest, that should probably be the default position. Unless you've got a university. But even then, a university, that's probably still quite useful. Hmm. Let's put a base mansion in Baghdad. Lots of good upgrades. And the next turn I will upgrade my next university. So our tax income is jumping up by a lot. Maintain siege for now. Um, <laughs> shunt over this infantry and artillery for now. I should probably also upgrade my shipyards in in, in the in the Persian Gulf and in the Med, because I now have that new naval shore facility tech. They've declared war on me, which is about right. Austria has not been joined by anyone. Yep, too bad they're going to knock down some of my stuff. And now we've got that reason. <laughs> the reason why we've been expanding and growing our our um, industrial complex for. Let's see. I can't remember if are we at war with the Russians. I can't remember if we're specifically at well, I mean, we were at war with them. I'm not sure if we still are. But it's tempting to redeploy one of those armies over to the west to help fight the Austrians. Especially as we have that early warning of what's coming from Russia. So, what do we want to do? None of our armies are over here, so I probably want to do something like... Get my navy such as it is over here. Break off the siege, get aboard ship. Meanwhile, this army, you can combine, you can disband to make room for the camel. I'm pretty sure if I move them out, or if I don't tax you, and I rebuild this. And I try and upgrade the large madrasa to help make the Muslim population a bit more happy. No, actually, I'll just keep them in for a turn. It's more important that these guys get over. Probably about here. Actually, if that's the case, then I probably the last thing I want to do is rebuild that. I want to build up, build up my garrison in Istanbul. I mean, I get a big garrison as it is, but I want a bit more of a sturdy one. Looks like they may march south with a really weak army, actually. So we don't really get... Eh, it's probably not worth as much building anything in Athens yet. Probably want these guys to head down to Athens, then send their army north. So the best spending I can do will be in Istanbul, primarily.
Let's upgrade this poor fishing fleet. So obviously we lost trade with Austria. Let's see if we can replace that friendly with Denmark. Or actually we can trade with the with the uh, Barbary states. Yeah, I'll give you animal husbandry. And we've got a land border, so that can't be interfered with. Don't want to trade with you. What if we did peace and trade with the Russians? Yeah, they did not like that. Okay, let's try Denmark. I forgot we had Iceland. No. Dagestan doesn't like us, but don't worry about that. Let's try the United Provinces again. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not going to pay you for it. Okay, let's... Hmm. Let's cancel building of that, just in case. These guys are garrisons for Ankara. We've also got some new units. Oh yeah, we've got the new um, the new infantry. Although, it looks like some of these aren't like, aren't going to be available to the military academy. But we can get a set of Mameluk guards. They're light cavalry, even though they're guard cavalry. Agent detected. Oh, that was my guy. So they know I'm here. Okie dokie, let's hit enter. So the Austrians may make may take the first shot in this war, although it looks like they've been very nice and they've actually decided not to do that. That's enough time to get our ships around to Thessaloniki and deploy our army. And it also means we probably need to balance our investment spending with upgrading our military buildings in the Balkans. So like the Mughals are having some um, rebellion problems. So the things I need to upgrade, shipyards and military buildings. Those are the main things I need to do at the moment. Maybe not this shipyard explicitly. This one for sure. Let's get my army around to Thessaloniki. We can cut them off before they get, go south towards Athens. Disembark the army. And before we attack them, I'm going to do some more spending. Okay, so let's upgrade... Let's upgrade the barracks at least in both of these armies. Both of these buildings. Cities, rather. Ironfield's probably a good upgrade. We can't upgrade the college because we've got no money. But we do have money for roads. Most of my places don't even have roads. So let's spend it. Then let's take this army. Attack the army of Ernest Schroeder. The first real fight against Austrian forces to date. Well, the first real one, obviously, you probably fought um, earlier in the campaign, but those don't count. So let's see. Most of their army is um, is light infantry. Let's put my my um, Feline Muscomen up front. Flank them with Israelis. Let's put my artillery up at the top of this ridge because it's a perfect position. Lovely commanding view, view of the battlefield. Let's put a Israeli on the flank over here. Spread. Okay, let's put. Hmm. Let's put my Israeli and my Riskers of Souls. And my Feline and my Riskers of Souls behind the line. Maybe space them out a little bit more than that. 
for my Bashi Bazooks on the flanks to advance up and envelop them, or attempt to. Mobile elements on the flank, general in the centre. Good stuff, although it looks like. Well, regardless, we do want to push up. While we might not have the best infantry yet. We do have an extensively well rehearsed battle plan at this point. Pikeman, eh? So these guys need to run into position. The rest of our line's okay. Well, this right, this flank might want to run. Ah, yes, my Seminis. They really need to be replaced with cavalry at this point. Good, we got a good hit on them, or not near enough to take out their gun. Let's run my fella in. So they've got to be ready. Then we've also got to more specifically target their infantry. Also, these are militia units, so we're not really bothered about those. Despite the fact they do look really good. Yeah, these pikemen are a concern. Ideally, I'd like them to commit and be shot down by our infantry. Their militia. Let's go try to take out their general with my camels. There go the pikemen. I'm going to smash into their irregulars with my normal troops. Let's pivot these men onto the flanks of these. Austrians and also bring up our Semini to at least try and do. Oh, these are our Felain. Perfect. Send my Bashis in to help support my cavalry. Falling on, charging on the flanks. Cavalry here is having a wonderful time. We need some good hits on the flanks, but it's not going to be enough. So I'm going to pivot my Israeli in. So my Bashi is going to make short work of this Landwehr militia unit. Send my camels after the guns. Looks like a unit's reformed. So go after them. Get my general over here. Look okay, at these militiamen are getting mauled badly by my bashies. That man just got skewered. Take out that unit there. Hmm, the general's not happy with this. The unit of the regulars is just coming back. The 
one of them got up there. Let's retarget my troops to hit more in the centre. My cavalry take out their cavalry. James bodyguard smash into that Panda unit. Keep my cavalry clear. Enemy forces. Yeah, their militia is actually says they're winning. The general's been knocked out. Oh no, they're going to get hit by my own cavalry charge. Yep, there must have been men there. Looks like my Bashi Bazooks might actually need some. Uh, might be a bit more out. a bit outpaced for. Uh, Western melee combat. The general is having a grand time out on the flank. These Mamelukes have become very experienced. Good. Let's get my let's get this get this cavalry over here to go and engage the routing troops. These men have had too much of a free hand to engage my men. No, don't want the Seminese. Oh, the Marines actually did charge in. Let's bring my camels over. Yeah, these bashies have taken a bashing. Push my infantry up to give their infantry no chance but to reevaluate their position. We've got two grenadiers, so we definitely want to take them out. I haven't forgotten their marines. general doing over here. The last 12 handful of these light infantry. It's halting artillery fire. It's done a lot of damage already. Just bring my camels down to go hit those grenadiers. Well, there's Marines, sorry. Yeah, right now the battle is... It's over. So this is more of a mopping up exercise now. Absolutely want to continue. It's too bad my general spent a lot of his time chasing after these routing irregulars. Especially when my camels, they might not even get to finish off this marine unit. Well, they did a pretty good job. Well, these guys are going to successfully route, but that's all the men left on the board, I think. Yes. <laughs> they did route. But the first the first battle between our forces, they got eviscerated and they, they fall back with their tail between their legs. Sweet. 
Um, done all this stuff, I think. Um, but looking at the timer, that's taking us over an hour. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time with the continuing adventures of the Ottoman Empire. Cheers, everyone.